Okay, so uh, let's get into the game. And uh, I will explain you why this strange clickbaitish title today and what I want to do with the safe setup and how it can help you to learn about setups and be more certain about your driving style. Why don't you use a safe setup? So you all know, I always said, okay, you want to go fast. The aggressive setup is already good enough and then you can, you know, uh, start uh, improving on the aggressive setup. But tonight is about all you guys that you are, you know, arriving on, on the sim racing scene, on a Santa Cruz competizione, you don't know exactly what to do. Uh, and maybe you feel that the aggressive setup is a little bit too aggressive. And it is also for all you guys that the aggressive setup is fine, but you would like to, you know, tweak things because it's fun to tweak things. Let's admit it. Uh, I know that I'm telling you, you know, the problem is not on the setup, but it is fun to change the setup and feel different things that the car can do. So it's all about you guys that you want to start tweaking but you don't know what to start, where to start from. You are tweaking the aggressive. You're getting results that you probably don't know if they are good enough. Uh, you are not certain of what you are doing, maybe, or if the car is getting better or worse. So how to understand, all right? So let me show you something first with the aggressive setup. Okay, so let's get the aggressive setup. Uh, this is the setup, whatever, okay. And uh, now what's the problem with the aggressive setup? There's no real problem. It's a pretty good um, uh, setup. And you can have fun. You can get really uh, fast. As uh, John Smith just said, Tortellini, you all know uh, the alien, uh, just qualified, qualified on the P1 for the British GT uh, official event using just the aggressive setup. So, yeah. But what is the problem for us, you know, normal mortals you know the problem with the aggressive setup is that it's okay if you can handle it but when you're trying to ask a little bit extra uh, you might not realize if while you're driving the problem is you know between the steering wheel and the seat so if the problem is your driving style or if it is the car or if, or if it is your um, your, the, the racing line you are getting, and so on and so on. So I want to show you a little bit of this. So, we are now driving the aggressive setup, all right? And uh, here's the situation. Now I'm breaking here. Oops, oh, a little bit, a little bit too much. I went wide from oversteer. Why was that? Did I, didn't do a proper braking? Or did I brake too late? Did I accelerate too, too early here? It's always, okay, what is the problem? You know, you still have to drive over the limit and slowly try to understand what actually is, whoa, you see there again, some oversteer, why that happened? Did I went aggressive on the, on the curb? Was it my line? Was it my steering inputs? Was it my pedal inputs? What was the problem? Okay, it's, it's not always easy to understand why things are happening with the aggressive setup, all right? So again, here, you see, a little bit of oversteer. I'm losing time. Why is this happening, okay? That is the, the situation with the aggressive setup. Now, of course, with a lot of practice, you know, you get better and better and better, and things obviously improve and so on. But again, you can never be, okay, wh why here am, am I losing time? Is it that I am too aggressive on the curbs? Is it that I am too aggressive on the steering inputs, is it because uh, the, the setup doesn't treat me like that, you see? I'm, I'm having some issues. I don't know why those things are happening, all right? So why the car here goes straight and why on the lap before it was oversteering? So something is wrong, okay? Is it my practice? Again, a lot of doubts, okay? Many, many doubts. You see, before here, I went wide. Now I took it better and the car seemed stable. Why? All right? Whoop. Goes in my line here, or did I went uh, with my steering input way too much inside? Okay, so what, what is actually that is happening? Should I just continue to, whoa, to, uh, to practice and get better? Yes, of course you should. All right. 
but again it doesn't if you don't know exactly what is happening it doesn't really give you an answer of what is going on okay uh, you have many doubts you're not really uh, able to understand what is the problem uh, and if the problem is you if the problem is on the steering if the problem is on the pedals if the problem is on the line why so this is the main issue with the with the aggressive setup and of course you're gonna need a lot of practice to start understanding how the car behaves and get better in the driving and then maybe start tweaking uh, the setup but it's all gonna be behind this big enormous cloud all right okay why you should choose the safe setup and what that means for you for your driving style and everything okay so let's get the safe setup now and number one that you need to do fix the pressures we all know that so safe setup as it is we go out we fix the pressures and then we move from then on now while you're doing that and uh, you're fixing the pressures we can already start to understand something that the safe setup give us now on the safe setup you see the car goes wide okay so i just took the turn a little bit faster the, and the car went wide into understeer and you all know that you know uh, the safe setup sucks because it is always understeery always slow uh, nothing else happens well now this is the great great uh, secret of the safe setup the safe setup takes out of the equation any doubts about if the problem was the curb if the problem was the driving style if the problem was the setup style you know that the safe setup 90 99 percent of of the time will just understeer it's the setup so knowing that you can very easily understand that whatever happens is either because you braked way too late okay or you brake or you accelerated way too early for example or you went way too much over the curb but everything it does it will always understeer so the only thing you have to do on your driving is every time that you have understeer at the turn in just brake five meters sooner right so every time you have understeer at the exit accelerate a little bit a little bit later you see it understeers and there is no doubt why it does that this is what the safe setup is supposed to do so there is no doubt is it the is it my driving style is it my it's always your reference points at the end of the of the day there is no doubt about that here go slow accelerate later and the car stays on the road yes i know everybody gonna do but i want to go faster and if i do this i'm gonna be slower that's not important right now what you want to know right now is okay when is the correct moment to accelerate when is the correct moment to brake before the turn you know and i won't have any other issues there's no doubt it will always do pretty much the same thing all right so this is really really important for you because practically even even over here you see on the curbs the wrong line but still the setup was safe so you take out of the equation any doubts about is it the car that doesn't suit me is it i don't know what that, you always know it's my line and my reference point always okay so that is a great great thing to know because at that point you can start working on the setup and you can start working on your lines to make the car better so it makes so you you can see actually it's very clear it makes no sense to brake later and later because you won't make the turn okay and you know that because it is it is the car and nobody else okay so just brake earlier that teaches you what to do with your your, your driving line and your reference point if you accelerate sooner all right uh, it will go again wide so that teaches you once more to wait before accelerating for example if i go here and go first gear and i start accelerating it just goes wide you see 
No, no other, no other ways. It's nothing you can, uh, uh, you you can do. There's no doubt about that. Okay. So this is what happens with the safe setup. Now some cars might be more neutral than others, but generally, as I said, 90% of the time, the same setup, the safe setup would just go straight, and that's it. Okay. So let us fix the uh, the pressures. So uh, let's fix the pressures. We need one psi at least here higher, 26.7. And a little bit extra, maybe one, two, okay. And uh, six here at least one, two, three, four, five, six. And another, ooh, more than one PSI here 26.1 and one, two, three, four, five at least. <coughs> Sorry, and seven here. Actually, no, one, 26.1. One and one, two, three, something like that. Okay, so the pressure should be correct. Okay. All right. So we have now fixed the pressures. Now, what to do? The first thing that you want to do with your safe setup, you want to go faster because obviously the safe setup is cool and everything, and it's easy, but it is a little bit slow and it understeers everywhere and so on and so on. So just go into the arrow. Okay. Um, the arrow already gives you an idea of what its car, how its car prefers to be set up to be safe. Okay, so you go into its car safe setup, you go into the arrow, and you see, for example, that uh, the Ferrari is very characteristic that it needs a little bit of a negative rake, so the front end is higher than the rear end, and this is typical for the Ferrari. Uh, we won't change that for now, okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to go down by three clicks everywhere, both front and rear. And we're going to have a look also and see what is going to happen to the front aero variation. Now, again, I, rem I remind you, the front aero variation is not an absolute value of the aero balance, front and back. But it is, you have to keep it uh, in mind as the variation that occurs when you are changing the right height. So where the front balance moves from wherever it was before, we don't know where it is, uh, but it shows us where it moves back and forth. So right now is at a position that it is 2.2% uh, at the rear uh, from where it should be at 65 rear 60 front. Uh, let's go down by three. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay, and nothing else. Nothing else. So we just went down by three. As you see here, the variation uh, shows us that the aero balance has moved a little bit to the front. I remind you, one millimeter right height difference at the front is usually two to three millimeters equal to two to three millimeters variation at the rear. So if I went down three here and three at the back, the Aero balance couldn't stay at the same point, but it started moving towards forward. All right, so this is why this number became less negative because the aero balance has moved to the forward right now. We also went lower. By going lower, the diffuser and the splitter works better, and so we get even more downforce. And we also get less drag because they become more efficient. So, right now, by going three millimeters lower at the right height front and rear from the safe setup, don't do this in the aggressive, from the safe setup, okay, we gained both in maximum downforce and both in less aerodynamic drag. So the car should be faster and it should be also a little bit less understeery because, as I said, by going in equal measures front and rear, the balance moves slightly to the front, all right? So, so as you see right now, it's really very easy. We just s fixed the pressures and we went down both at the front and at the rear in equal measure, uh, three millimeters. Okay, so three clicks. Let's uh, heat up the tires now. All right, things are getting better. Pressures are coming up.
Look at that. The car is already much, much uh, more neutral than before. And we did nothing practically. We just went down three clicks and fixed the pressures. That was it. The car is so much better. So the pressures are pretty good, coming up very nicely. We are already in 44 flats with uh, full fuel and uh, safe setup with three clicks. Let's try to do another lap. Look at that, even, even by getting way too much aggressive over the kerbs, which is not so correct here, the car still reacts very, very well, very nicely. Car on the left, gear on the left. Car on the right, clear on the right. Look at this, I'm still down from a lap time by having to overtake cars, so... Sahin, thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate it. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Look at this setup here. We, uh, we did nothing. Yellow flag in sector three. It's wonderful to drive. Now, okay, we like the setup. We could do an even extra couple of uh, clicks on the arrow. I would start to go down by one click at a time this time. And not three clicks, of course. Let's finish our lap. Look at that lap time going down. You see also how small movements I have to do on the steering wheel because the car still is very safe, very stable. Look at this lap time. 42.8 coming. Just like that. Full fuel load. Nothing strange, nothing 42.8, that's it. How about that? Okay. Safe setup, went down to three clicks on the on the arrow, nothing else, just the pressures. Okay. So let's go back to the to the setup. Now next steps. Okay. So already right now you know that to go faster you need to get lower, alright? And uh, you also still have a feeling of the car what is doing because you know already that the car before that was under steery and now it has become more neutral do you think that you need even less under steer instead of going down at the rear you can go one click at the front one click more at the front lower so you can see already by doing that 1.8 you go down and it becomes 1.6 or you could leave the um uh, the right head as it is and you could try one click less rear wing so you start gaining some top end speed if that is needed for the circuit car combo those are all, those are all small steps you can take all right that it will make your practice session interesting and it will give you the ability to start playing with the setup but without losing your targets because if you go directly on the aggressive setup and you don't
don't know exactly what is going on with the car and you have many doubts is it you is it the car is it the setup is it whatever right take the safe do this only by doing the laps to make the pressures good and getting used to the car understanding everything the moment you can stay on track while the car is understanding so much you know what you have to do then you go down with the three clicks on the right gate and you are already having a car that starts changing towards the correct direction that you want less understeer more neutral and becoming also faster after that you want more top speed okay one click rear wing less two clicks rear wing less and you start uh, understanding what's going on you don't want more top speed fine go back with the rear wing and go down with the front right head one click two clicks try to understand what is happening okay so uh, and you you start doing that again a couple of clicks one click at a time that's all you need a couple of lap times this is good so let's go down on rear wing 10 leave everything how it is okay and try something different now so we know that we have less rear wing so we should be faster on the straights okay which is great but we might have lost something on on the uh on on the turns uh and certainly we will have more rotation because we will have less downforce at the rear and more downforce at the front so let's let's see what happens and we're gonna do something extra now And this is going to be very, very easy again. And right on target, practically. All right, so out again. Now I remind you, we have less rear wing. Car on the right, clear on the right. Car seems, whoa, whoa, that was a <laughs> slap tank over there car seems uh, neutral and nice to me so it doesn't seem as if the rear wing uh, made our car very oversteer so that's good very nice yeah very good so no big uh, problems here. So let's bring the tires and the pressures up to the ideal range. Again, this obviously is going to be different from person to person. I feel safe enough with this kind of setup. You might go down two clicks on the rear wing and start having issues, no problem get back one click all right or you might go down one click on the rear and uh, still feeling under steering go down one click also on the front right head and so on all right so pressures start to rise up what can we do while we're driving to get faster well it's easy let's go down a click or two uh, on uh, on the traction control okay so the uh, traction control was at uh, five six let's go down to four four all right and see if we can gain time lap time because of course the less traction control you have and uh, the faster you accelerate obviously the car might start to become you know a little bit more oversteer at the exit but maybe that is exactly what we want and it's very easy to do because we can do it exactly while driving look at that already rotates on the accelerator Look at how I gained a little bit at the exit. I was losing at the entrance, but I gained at the exit. Probably because my acceleration is better. Not this time, that was bad on me. A little bit too much over still there. Yellow flag is 
can see how I gain on the straight line because I have less swing. Now the car now starts to be more uh, difficult to drive. You see, I have to do some make micro corrections. You see? So I might have to go one click back on the wing, for example. Because I don't seem to get any faster right now. But it's easy to understand why. You see? Wasn't able to stop the car properly. So it's it's pretty clear, right? Uh, I did a change and I don't seem to like it for at least for my level of practice. Maybe after you know a week of practice I can go back again and 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 improve the setup even more while I'm doing it so. So for me right now it would make sense to go up one click on the rear wing and maybe go down uh, on the electronics here two clicks and go back to, to four, like this. I could play with the brake bias while I'm driving. I could play with the uh, ABS while I'm driving. Sorry, that was like that, okay. So I can do all that stuff and it's really very easy and you don't lose your way starting from the safe setup, okay. At some point, if you are, you know, becoming very accustomed to the car and to the truck, you can even go, you know, you can save this, you can go to your um, aggressive setup and see what's going on. And maybe, you know, do a comparison between the two and choose, you know, which, uh, which setup to, to use, for example. So you can do all that stuff. But what I wanted to show you today is that just with a couple of clicks, okay, you can instantly improve the safe setup, which is very easy to move around and helps you to learn the, the, the car and the truck better. And from then on, it's very easy to start, you know, moving towards one point or the other. At some point, maybe on some trucks, you can start, you know, playing with the, um, uh, with the mechanical grip and so on and so on. So, yeah, this is, this is how you can do it, right? <laughs> Everybody asks for a different car. All right, all right. So let's uh, let's get the Porsche that you think, guys, it's very difficult, which it is, especially at Imola. Okay, let's go in again and let's do the same exact thing. Same exact thing. Now we know that the 911 is difficult, especially at Imola. It suffers. It doesn't have enough top speed. It is a difficult car. Safe setup, no problems. Go out understand the the car and understand the circuit and uh, try to find out uh, the correct pressures all right okay let's do that it's it's really hard this car we do, we all know that but i'm very confident we're gonna be able to do it all right let's go look at this understeer when was the last time that you could do a fast left right with the Porsche and still not having the rear end wanting to overtake you? Look at that. Over the curb. No problems. Obviously it understeers. No big deal. Look at it. Understeer. Understeer. Okay. That means I have to be a bit slower. There is no doubt about it. It's not, it's not the car anymore. It's me. Look at this. Look how stable it is. Yes, the front end just washes out. So what? So what? Let's say this is a fixed setup and you can't do anything else, you know? Just deal with it and adjust your speed. There is no doubt that it is the car or it is, I don't know, the curb or it is... No. It's just your line and your reference points. That's all. Look at this. Amazing st stability. I just went through Variante Alta like nothing like there wasn't any curb bam boom that's what it end of story it's amazing 
again, I'm telling you, we're not doing that to tell you that the safe setup is better. It's not. But if you want to learn the track and learn to make setups, it's the best possible uh, uh, choice that you can do. Instead of, you know, jumping from one setup to another or dealing with the uh, twitchiness of the aggressive setup, just take the safe setup, do some laps, fix the pressures. Look at this here. In. No problem. It just washes out. So, you see, I have to raise my foot. It means that I went into the accelerator way too fast. There's no doubt about that. You see? Understeer. So, here I will go slower. And wait. Wait, 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 wait. Go. Okay. I can deal with that. Again, here. Stop. Wait. Go. No problems. I went too wide because I want... I, I started breaking way too late. Okay? So, it's the same exact situation right now. Yes, the car is not fast. Yes, but we don't care at this point. What we care is to understand how the car behaves into the track and adjust our own driving style to make the car do the correct trajectory. And that will help us also to learn the car better. All right? Fine. Now that we know that the car understands so on, we go back to the setup and we do ex the exact same things that we did before. So let's fix the pressures. 27.1 here. Okay, point, uh, 0.3. Okay. And uh, 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And uh, 26.3. Right. And 26.3. And one, two, three, four. Okay, so pressures should be good. Aero, one, two, three, one, two, three. I don't even have a look on how it is, what it, I, I don't care. I just go down by three. And if I need, after a couple of laps, I will do, I will go down, but the next time I will go down by two or one. Okay, and move around there. So you can see already that the Porsche works better with a positive rake, so more lower front end than rear end. Every car is different. Okay, so we did that. Let's go out and start having a look at how the car behaves. Okay, let's see if we can do a lap. Pressures are almost perfect. We are already at 44.4. Thank you, Mercedes. Okay, let's see what we've done this time. Four to three point six again. So Again, I, uh, we did the same exact lap time. So let's go back to the garage. I can already feel some understeer, okay? So what I will do this time, I won't go down by three, I will go down by two. So one, two, one, two, that's it. And I will do some extra laps. Now, this is very important. By doing that, as I told you before, you are doing very basic things and you still understand what is changing on your car. You see that the front aero variation moves to the front and you get less understeer and the car becomes more neutral, all right? And you will arrive at a point where if you keep on doing it do, and doing it or you go, you know, different way front and rear, at some point you will start having issues, okay? You will arrive at a point where you're gonna have understeer or oversteer, depending on what turn you are, and when, this is where things start to become more complex, all right? At that point, okay, it's really, really very easy, uh, because honestly, 
All you have to do is go to our Discord server, all right, and uh, just, you know, just go into the setup engineer bot. I hope you can see it on, uh, on the stream and start making questions. Maybe not. Let's go just to like that. So you go to the setup engineer bot and you start asking questions for specific turns. And that should help you, you know, uh, find out. And by doing that, you also start to understand, okay, so if I do this, that is how the car changes. Which is different if you have a car that it's all around the place and you don't understand what the car is telling you, all right? Uh, so it's really, really different. Ryan, stop trolling the channel. <laughs> so it's different because this time here with the safe setup, you know what and how the car behaves when you are making changes, okay? When, if you are get whatever setup out there, or if you start with the aggressive, but you are not up to the point to control the aggressive, you are doing changes and you might not understand what is going on, okay? You have doubts. With the same setup, you have no doubts anymore, all right? And, um, okay, so let, let's go out and do a couple of laps more and see if we can uh, improve on that. Actually, let me show you also something extra. Yes, are the... Now we're talking. Lost some time. And gain some time. Oops. Here we are, 4 to 3.2. No practice, no real, you know, it's not like I'm focusing like crazy to do these lap times. S started from safe setup, I did five clicks, which are practically two sessions, and the pressures, and that's it. But again, the most important thing that I'm trying to explain you tonight is not that, oh yeah, you can be fast or not with the safe setup and so on, so on, so on. No. The most important thing here is that you are starting with a setup that you understand what it does and why. And it does always the same thing. And you, the more clicks you do, the more the setup moves to a faster and better version. And when it doesn't do that, it's easy for you to understand and say, oh, I'm not faster anymore, something is wrong, Let's go back one step and try again. This is the key to tonight's live stream. It's that you know what is happening. It's different with the aggressive setup because you might not, or with whatever alien setup you have get or whatever other kind of setup you have yet that you, it's the, the any other setup that you get into is made to go fast with some driver that knows the trucks and knows the car, all right? And you go into this and you might not understand what is going on and it will take you tons and tons and tons of practice and fiddling while in the whole situation, the practice session you're going to do, you will always have doubts 
about what is going on, why things are happening the way they are happening. But if you try with the safe setup, you will always go in better and better and better, okay? And at the point that you're not getting better anymore, you know that something was off, so you just go one step behind and you get back to the setup that you like and you can try something different. This is the greatest difference from everything, okay? And for example, now I know that this setup right now was getting understeer and understeer and understeer yet, so I could go one extra right head down. I could do something here different and so on and so on, okay? And uh, yeah, so this is, this is how, how you, can, you can improve, in my opinion, uh, not only your driving style, and how you fast you go, which is secondary. Well, yeah, it's, it's primary, all right, yeah. But I know that most of you guys want to go in here, start clicking, and feel the gratification that the clicks you do make sense and the car becomes more uh, good for you, for your driving style, right? This is the way. This is the way, all right? Take the safe setup. Start with three clicks and then move forward because you know what is happening and that's all about it. Okay, so Thomas Dura says, okay, what to look when the head hits the, the bottom limit? All right, so let's say you're not at Imola. Okay, you are at a very flat track, I don't know, Mizano or I don't know, Spa or whatever, not Spa, probably not Spa because you have the Orus. Uh, you are on a very flat track, so you can go and go and go at some point, you hit here, the minimum, and you are very low here. Whatever you have done, wherever you have arrived, you are going to have a balance of the car, right? This is the trick here. You are moving towards a balance of the car, so if you have arrived here, <clears throat> Sorry, and you are at the limit and the balance is still good for you and you are getting faster and faster What you can do? Well, you can try less rear wing for example Are you faster? Is the car better? Yes, right a little bit extra Are you faster? Is the car better? Yes, okay. No. All right. No. Well one click less Okay, and let's go we are at the limit here, we know that it works, let's go to a different thing. So let's go to the mechanical grip, all right? So everything seems to, to work nicely. So let's try with the car a little bit less rigid, no? softer roll, uh, uh, anti-roll bars. Is it better for you? Yes, okay, let's move one more click extra. Is it better for you? No, okay, let's go back, okay? So this is the, the whole situation here. This is the trick of the safe setup. The, the trick is if you go into the aggressive setup, all right, and here the car moves around and sometimes at the same turn, one lap you have oversteer. The next lap you have understeer. The third lap you are sliding four wheels uh, outside. And the fourth lap you are doing it perfect. Here is the doubt. Is the car correct? Is it your driving? Is it your steering input? Is it the pedal input? What the fuck is going on? You don't know exactly. You need tons and tons and tons of practice until you start to understand the car. And if you are like any typical sim racer and like me, and you know, and you like to fiddle with the, with the setup, the moment you start tweaking the aggressive setup, you don't really know if you are improving or not. What I'm offering you here is a different path where you get the safe setup and you know that the safe setup will always do the same thing in all the turns. Whenever you try to go faster, it will 90% of the time understeer. And so every click you are doing, it makes it become better and better and better. And at the point that it's not better anymore, you go one click back and go to a different tab and you try something else. Okay, so you finished with the arrow, you are at the limit with the arrow, what to do? Let's go to the anti-roll bars. Try, is it better, is it worse? I don't know. Let's go to the wheel rate, is it better, is it worse? Let's go to the bump stop, is it better, is it worse? You have a clear path. You know what is happening every time you do something different. This is the 
different path that I'm offering you tonight instead of just, okay, get the aggressive laps, 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 laps at some point, you know, after 200 laps, you are fast and maybe you start understanding what the click's doing. Okay? Uh, no, Marcus, you need to start always with tire pressures, always, and end your work with tire pressures because once you have changed a little bit your setup, the tire pressures might have changed a little bit. And they might also change a little bit as you become faster and better. So your driving style changes, so they will get a little bit unbalanced. So start with tire pressures, end with tire pressures again for the fine tuning. Okay? And I would go. Also, if you find my playlist with how to do a setup, I would go tire pressures, aereo, uh, bump stops, wheel rates, and then everything else. How do you know that you have reached the lowest right head? Well, it, you know, it doesn't go lower than 53 here. That's it. <laughs> now, if you mean how do you know if you have reached the lower right height in terms of efficiency because it might be that you know uh, you are at 55 okay and you go lower and the car is not good anymore it happens because my maybe the splitter stalls or maybe you jump over the curbs too much it's easy again because if you're doing what i'm telling you you'll see that after a certain limit you have issues to control the car and you are getting slower if you're getting slower the lap time and the gratification of the driving, so the car does whatever you want it to do, are your um, clues to understand if you're doing better or not. If you are at 57 and you have your best lap and everything works fine for you, and then you go down to 55 and you get slower and every time you try to go over the caps, the car jumps around, that's not good. Go back, 56 again, 57 again, and move to a different Mechanical grip, uh, electronics, maybe leave the dampers for, for last, you know, because it's difficult. Here's how you do it. 